I mean, his view is that the major bubble has burst. Stock markets have managed to predict recessions and also depressions majority of the time. But bear in mind, you know, the, the Federal Reserve have been engineering. They want to see the yeah. economy cooling. What they want to see is a soft landing, as we've been calling it, or very shallow recession. The problem with fundamentals is you can't always time them. For me, risk has increased to the downside based on what I'm seeing on the charts. Things don't look good at all. That's the way I'm seeing it. I think the technical picture has worsened. There are flags. There are warnings that could see a, an, an extra 10% drop in stocks. Is it your view that the proper strategy in a downtrend or a bear market, the better strategy would be short rallies? Even if you're trading, trying to sell the bounce, so to speak, some of these bounces can be of quite a large magnitude. Yes. So yes. that's the one thing with bear markets is that volatility increases. Hi, this is you hope you're well. In this video, I want to share with an interesting discussion I had with my good friend and trader, Charlie Burton, about the major stock market, especially after the recent bear market signal we got just this past week. So in this video, I want to share with you what Charlie Burton's expectations are for the markets. And also, what are the dangers? What are the potential mistakes we can avoid? And what potential strategies can we apply? Should be quite interesting. Join me. All right, guys, welcome back. Now, before we go into the discussion I had with my good friend, Charlie Burton, about the major stock markets and also what potential mistakes we can avoid and what potential strategies we can apply, there is something important I need to mention here. Just recently, a bear market signal was triggered in the stock markets. I made a video about this recently, if you haven't seen it. Whenever the signals occurred in the past, the risk of a major downtrend or a recession increases dramatically. In fact, recently, the analyst Jay Keppel of Sentiment Trader issued this warning. The market could become more volatile in the months ahead with the potential for large up and down swings in price, the threat of a bear market is also heightened. This warning was based on a fear gauge that measures stress in the financial markets. So how is this important? Why should this matter to you? You see, when it comes to investing and diversifying, most people only think about two things, stocks and bonds, or they might think about gold and Bitcoin or a combination of all four. The problem is that all these markets, stock markets, bonds, gold and Bitcoin, are extremely volatile and often closely correlated. For example, last year in 2022, all these markets that I just mentioned dropped and that may potentially happen again. Now recently, gold and Bitcoin have been going up quite nicely as we'd anticipated, but the future is still highly unpredictable and uncertain. Nobody knows what will happen to the economy or the markets, especially with oil prices rising and the bond market tanking. My point is that most people ignore the number one asset that professional investors consider, fine art. For example, did you know that fine art is one of the few assets that is not subject to huge volatility? It is relatively more stable. The reason is that art has a low correlation to other major assets. That is why blue chip contemporary art has now outpaced the S&P 500 for the last 27 years by an impressive 136%. By the way, I'm not saying that investing in art has no risks. It does, just like any other investment. And this video is for educational purposes only, not a recommendation to invest. I'm simply saying that most people completely ignore fine art as an investment because they think mistakenly that it's only for billionaires. Wrong. In fact, just recently, I myself made a very modest investment in a Banksy painting with the help of our sponsor, Masterworks. Masterworks allows ordinary people like you and I to learn how to invest in art and also by having a share in the paintings. So when they sell a painting, the net proceeds are passed on to their investors. By the way, Masterworks have sold 16 paintings to date, all of them profitable to investors. Masterworks have over 800,000 users and are the only art platform in the world offering museum grade blue chip art. Getting started with Masterworks is very simple. Simply click on the link in the description for priority access. Then just set up an account in a few seconds and browse their artwork. By the way, any money we get from sponsors is given to charity, such as helping abandoned animals like the dog I talked about in my previous video. All right, guys, thank you. Let's get back to the video and my discussion with my friend Charlie Burton about the stock markets. What I want to talk about with Charlie is something has happened quite recently. There's been a lot of uncertainties, a lot of dangerous moves in the markets. In fact, as you may recall from my previous video, I mentioned that the odds of a potential bear market have increased, have risen, uh, a number of signals are triggered, which have increased the risk of a potential bear market. In fact, it's probable by the time this video is even going out, it's probable the market may already have dropped quite significantly by the time this you're watching this video since we recorded this video. Uh, in any case, uh, what I want to talk about with Charlie here is what's his view um, about the general markets and the economy. So rather than just focusing on charts, I want to get his view on what he thinks is going on and what could it mean for generally the overall economy and the major markets? If it's correct, we're entering a major downward cycle. So Charlie, um, you may recall 
that uh, we've mentioned this before that the trader Robert Prechter has been very bearish on the stock market for some time. I mean, his view is that the major bubble has burst, uh, the bull market cycle bubble has burst, and that we're entering the mother of all crashes. That's not what he says. He doesn't call it the mother of all crashes. It's a paraphrasing of his point of view. He thinks we're beginning the big one, the big crash towards significantly lower levels. Now, I have to tell you, that has not been my view until recently. It's only recently we got some several bear market signals that that view, that bearish view has increased in probability. For one thing, we've broken below the trend line, we've broken below several support levels. And recently, Manuel Bly, the Dow Theory, has also said that the Dow Theory model has triggered a bear market warning, a bear market signal. If that's correct, let's assume that's correct. What do you think that what do you think that could mean for the overall economy? I mean, that doesn't sound very good at all. Because is it correct, Charlie? I mean, you mentioned this before that stock markets have managed to predict recessions and also depressions majority of the time. They're leading usually. Is that something yeah. you agree with? Yeah, they are. Uh, they normally are a, like we call a leading indicator. And so the stock market will usually turn long before an economy you know, turns, so to speak. So the US economy at the moment, you know, it's, not, it's absolutely nowhere near a recession right now. GDP is pretty decent, but it's not to say that it can't dip into recession. We've got very high interest rates, as we were talking about earlier on. Um, mortgage mortgage rates, 30-year mortgage rates over in the US are at 8% now, and new applications for mortgages are at 26-year lows. So people aren't buying houses, or they're not looking to buy houses at the moment, because applications for new mortgages aren't there. And we're seeing, of course, higher interest rates across the board. They they um, they do affect uh, companies as well and businesses that have to borrow. And so it squeezes their margins too. So th there are a lot of headwinds at the moment, but then there are a lot, there's always a lot of headwinds at various times. Just depends on whether the markets can shrug it off net yet uh, or not. And I guess that's the big question. But if, uh, as you're saying, if there is a larger correction in stocks, then yes, it wouldn't bode well for the for the economy. But bear in mind, you know, the the Federal Reserve have been engineering. They want to see the yeah. economy cooling. They want to see what they want to see is a soft landing, as we've been calling it, or very shallow recession. It's really a case of whether a shallow recession or just a softening of the economy uh, becomes something larger or not. One, uh, by the way, before we continue, let me say that um, I should also mention this. Uh, guys, make sure you check out Charlie Burton's Gold Level Membership. We'll talk about it towards the end as well. But uh, make sure you check out Charlie Burton's Gold Level Membership with a discount, which will drop his membership down to one pound, like $1.20 for 30 days. The link is in the description. We'll cover that at the end of the video. There is a misconception out there that people think that, that when the Federal Reserve is increasing rates, that's bad for the stock market. I mentioned in December of last year, and you were there with me, by the mm -hmm. way, in the webinar, mm -hmm. history shows that is not the case. History shows that actually when the Federal Reserve is increasing rates, markets usually go up as well. It has done this in the past. So people misconstrued that. And that's why so many people last year, in October last year, were very bearish, saying, no, the market's going to crash. It's going to go lower. That was last year, by the way. They were wrong. I don't care what they say. The fundamentals crowd always say, oh, the fundamentals are really what matters. Techni forget technicals, forget chart analysis. Well, guess what? The fundamentals, the people who followed them were completely 100% incorrect and wrong because last year in December of 2022, everybody was bearish because they thought, well, the market cannot go up because of increasing rates. We said the opposite, you and I. We said, no, actually the markets can go up because first of all, technicals lead, whereas fundamentals lag. Actually, the, the worst time is when the Federal Reserve changes its mind, it pivots, and starts cutting rates. So it's only when the Federal Reserve cuts rates, that's a bad sign for the economy. That's a bad sign for the stock market. History has shown this, by the way, as well. Now, so far, the Federal Reserve has not pivoted. The Federal Reserve has paused rates, but it has not cut rates. The main point is, if, if people think about it logically, that when economies running strong, rates tend to be increased because uh, they need to start... Uh, you know, take advantage of that. The economy can can absorb higher interest rates. As you quite rightly said, it's when rates start getting cut. The only reason that rates are getting cut is because the economy is slowing. <laughs> and so yeah. by de facto, as you've just said, it's when interest rates started getting cut 
that's because the intro the, the economy is not performing well and they they need to start um helping the economy out by cutting yeah. interest rates so you're absolutely right the problem with fundamentals is you can't always time them yeah. so it's you need the technicals and and sentiment as well we reach ex- extremes in short term sentiment levels as well which can be really useful but it's tying up mm. sentiment and technicals which is more important to me generally your bias on the market at the moment as we're making this video what's your view i've already shared with our members and also i've shared with others what my view is uh about the markets as i said before we've had several bear market warning signs so for me risk has increased to the downside based on what i'm seeing on the charts things don't look good at all that's the way i'm seeing it i think the technical picture has worsened has become much more risky in the markets. If it's correct, we're entering a bear market, which seems likely. I mean, if let's say we drop into a downtrend, uh, which is what I, what I think is eventually going to happen. But if that's correct, and I know you want further confirmation, I know your view is we should wait for further confirmation. That's fair. That's I respect that. Do you where do you see us going eventually? I mean, do you think we could see some big volatile moves to the downside probably by in the next several months? I don't like really getting to it's very rare that you'll you'll see me getting too <laughs> um overly bearish or whatever yeah. because yeah. as you know i've always used the the principles of your better over the longer term being cautiously optimistic the human race has an amazing ability to solve problems there's lots of problems out there around the world so you're you're a glass half full person usually yeah <laughs> but of course within that there are going to be times of course there are going to be corrections and um, we like the 2022 correction that we've had bear market that we had so what you're trying to get out of me is you know do i see us coming back down you know in a material fashion i think there are flags there are warnings that could see a, a neck an extra 10% drop in stocks. Yeah, absolutely. If that's the case, then then no doubt I'll probably be trading that. <laughs> Generally, do you think, um, actually, I'm glad you mentioned that. Is it easier for you to trade a downward market than an upward market? I mean, there's a phrase, uh, we, we all know this, obviously, that markets take the staircase up, but they take the elevator down. Does that mean you prefer a downward trending market because just it's just much more faster, quicker, generally you know yes like you've just said you could make money if you want to look at it in a crude perspective that if you've got if you're in a trade then targets can get hit a bit quicker if you're short the market because the markets come, can come down at a, a faster pace but do i prefer that no because i'm naturally a bull i'm overall natural what i mean by naturally a bull is i like trading upwards trends and so don't get me wrong yes i can make money quicker but i don't want stock markets to go down i'm you know i know yeah. that they have to do it by the byproduct of markets breathing in and out and natural corrections which have to occur but one thing we always have to bear in mind is that when the stock markets are coming down, there's a lot of, means a lot of people out there are in, are in pain, mm-hmm. so financially or whatever. So I don't wish for that sort of thing because there is that byproduct when that sort of thing is going on. Just one last question, Charlie. It's quite an important one. If it's correct that we're entering a bear market or a downtrend, which seems likely in my view, is it your view that the proper strategy in a downtrend or a bear market, I know it sounds obvious, but it's worth just mentioning, is it also your view that the better strategy would be short rallies so any rallies you get into resistance would be an opportunity to short obviously with a stop loss is that generally your view as well and what kind of um what kind of things could people use do you think could be useful in that regard you know um, and just technically uh, overall generally speaking yeah i mean there's there's two ways of thinking if you look at the 2022 bear market we saw some very large rallies we saw yeah. rallies of like 20 percent rallies so um trading um even if you're trading trying to sell the bounce so to speak some of these bounces can be of quite a large magnitude yes. so yeah. that's the one thing with bear markets is that volatility increases you can be right as a trader and th- okay the market's going to go lower <laughs> but yeah. still end up getting caught just because the the volatility of some of the moves can be quite quite big but yes on principle um yes selling technically into what mm-hmm. would be prior lows uh, which now become resistance would be a, a logical way of looking at it um and any trend right. lines um the the clear trend lines in in the market as well obviously so, this stop loss very important 
Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, anyone but, who doesn't use stop losses as a trader, yeah, that's a, a very gambler. dangerous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you're absolutely right. And I'm glad you mentioned something very important, which is that you're right. In a in a downward market or a bear market, volatility increases. And usually you see these bounces, which people completely underestimate how big these bounces are. And that 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 often catches them out. Mm. So you need to be very so position sizing is going to be very important. Am I right, Charlie? Position sizing. Yeah, uh, there's an old, again, an old expression when you're trading in high volatility market conditions. If we were to go into a higher, you know, I know volatility just started creeping up a little bit this week, but if we went into a true bear market with high volatility, um, double your double your uh, your the size of your stop losses yeah. and half your position size, just to allow for the extra volatility. Um, because double your stop loss, but half the position size. Yeah, yeah. So it's just be, to allow for the extra volatility. Because what happens is markets, when they're in bear markets, because they're bouncing around so much, they can not always they can overshoot technical levels, yeah. but then still come back off. So a wider mm. stop loss, uh, but with a smaller position size, might just be uh, useful for some traders um, if we go into that type of environment. Yeah, one one method that I quite like is um, gradually scaling in. I find that quite useful. Scaling into something, into a trade, yeah. and then having a stop, having a hard stop above a resistance, just above resistance, having a hard stop loss. Um, having a trying to be absolutely specific at a, at a level is is difficult um, yeah. in that type of environment. So you, you're absolutely right by by saying, actually, I'm going to put a very small position in here. Um, mm -hmm. My hard stops up here, but I'm allowing for a couple mm -hmm. of other positions because there's this whole range where I might want to enter over and yeah. then have a hard stop above. Your your risk management is still there, um, mm -hmm. but you're just putting in small incremental positions in. Yes, mm -hmm. to a, because it's it's harder to be exact when you're in a in that sort of uh, higher volatility environment one mistake which people make uh is as i'm sure you know charlie is that in a bear market people think oh buy the dip complete mistake because if you keep buying the dip in a bear market you're just going to lose money over and over again especially if you as a trader uh, maybe i think you, you might say as an investor long term that's different but mm -hmm. as a trader buying the dip is a big mistake because you just end up losing money overall yeah, yeah. In a previous video, I said that in a bear market or a downtrend, you cannot use fear or extreme fear in the market, sentiment of extreme fear, as a contrarian indicator because just fear, you know, markets can be in extreme fear sentiments, sentiments, but keep going down. But what I would personally do, and this is something I forgot to mention in a previous video about sentiment, which was what you can do is use sentiment in a different way, which is you can wait for a bounce, like Charlie said, wait for a bounce to resistance, wait for the sentiment to change just temporarily to neutral or greedy. Sentiment must change from fear back to neutral or greed, and then fade that, short that with a stop loss. Would you agree with that, Charlie? I mean, would that be useful in a downtrend or a bear market? Yeah, and but the one thing to, to add to that is you're right, because if it goes from, from that to very quickly to neutral or greed, that would tell you that the bear market's not over because when yeah. bear markets are truly over, even when stocks start bouncing, uh, no yes. one believes it. Good so point. you don't go to mm. greed. You still have pessimism ease, even That's as right. the market's rallying. So if yeah. you go from pessimism to euphoria, you know, relatively quickly or, or people very quickly are thinking, that's it, it's all over. No, it probably isn't. It's when everyone says, no, this is a false flag. It's, it's yeah. going to roll over. When you hear that, then it's probably, it, we probably sure. have bottomed, yeah. Just to make sure I mentioned that this video is not a recommendation to trade or sell or buy, just purely for educational purposes. Uh, but I, I think it's very useful to get uh, your point of view, Charlie, in this video for everyone to understand and learn from. Charlie, thanks very much indeed. I hope this video has been helpful to everyone. Thank you for watching. Uh, make sure, guys, you check out Charlie Burton's trading service, which is, and by the way, make sure you use also the promo code LT Gold to get his price drop for 30 days down to, if the price drops down to about one pound or $1.20, which you can use for about 30 days and check it out. Uh, take it for a test drive if you haven't already done so. And uh, again, I think you'll be very much pleased with his service. You won't be disappointed. Thanks very much, Charlie. really appreciate it. Well, thanks for having me on as always.